Today's tutorial is about Mops Plus Alembic Skeleton. This is a little convenience node that helps you pose and animate object hierarchies without having to leave the SOPS context. It's not really a typical Mops node in the sense that it doesn't directly generate or modify packed primitives, but it does help with quickly posing and animating hierarchies in SOPS, and Mops is all about getting results fast. Alembic Skeleton reads the imported transforms and path attributes that come with a properly configured Alembic SOP and builds a KinFX compatible skeleton directly from them. You can then bind your imported Alembic geometry to the skeleton and pose, rig, and animate like anything else in KinFX. It's a pretty simple node in itself, but you need to check a few boxes to get things working together correctly, so I'll walk you through the whole setup. Normally in Houdini, if you want to import an Alembic hierarchy, you would use the Alembic archive object. Now there's a test Alembic that comes with mops called $MOPSPLUS slash examples slash robot arm dot ABC. And if I build or update hierarchy, you can see I get my little robot arm here. And each of these objects is differentiated as its own geometry container, which is great. But Alembic transforms, if you try to actually move them around, uh, they don't have transform handles. You can't select this. There's no parameters to make these changes with. You know, so if I wanted to rotate the upper arm joint here, I can't actually use a handle to do this easily. I can rotate this geometry container but this isn't the parent to anything downstream of it, so that won't work. I could also manually insert a null in here and wire this together in such a way that then I can rotate this null and the downstream objects will move with it, which is great, but I don't wanna to have to do this for every single node in here. And worse, if I, let's say, get updates from the modeling team later on where this thing has to change it all, I'm gonna to have to rebuild the hierarchy from this Alembic, and when I do that, all of my changes are erased. So that's not going to fly. A better way to do this is to handle this entirely in SOPS using Mops Alembic Skeleton. So I'm just going to delete this and drop down a geometry container. Inside, I'm going to drop down an Alembic SOP and point it to that same file. Now, once I've done that, if I go back to selecting primitives here, you can see that again, I have one primitive per object. But if I go to the geometry spreadsheet here, you're going to see that under the path list here, I have seven primitives one for each shape, but these are all shape nodes. These are exported from Maya, so you can see, even see that there's a shape suffix added to each one of these objects. So these aren't necessarily transforms, these are just shapes. In order for Mops Alembic Skeleton to work, you need that transform data, because those have the original actual transform matrices, uh, whereas the shapes are almost baked into world space. So on the Alembic SOP, what you want to do is change create primitives for from shape nodes only to shape and transform nodes. And now in this list, you can see that I have both cylinder and cylinder shape or shoulder and shoulder shape. So this is actually giving me the full original object hierarchy that existed inside this Alembic file. Now that I have this information, I'm gonna go back to scene view and then drop down Mops Plus Alembic Skeleton. There's really very few options that you have to tinker with here. Once I wire it in and hit display, you can see that I'm back down to seven primitives here. This is because Mops Alembic Skeleton by default just consumes those transforms. It assumes that you don't actually want to deal with them anymore, and 99% of the time you don't. Um, but in the case that you do, you have this option to keep transform nodes, and that'll allow them to pass through. I'm just going to turn that off for now because I don't want them. You're also going to see that there's this new attribute called transform path. And this is what Mops uses internally to link these paths with their parents. So you can see that cylinder shape is linked to cylinder and shoulder shape is linked to shoulder. You're going to use this information in that attribute to handle the bone deformations later on. If I drop down a null and point it to the second output of Mops Alembic Skeleton, this is the actual skeleton that's generated. So like any other KinFX skeleton, it's just points connected by primitives and there is a name attribute on the points along with a transform attribute that defines the actual transform matrix for each one of these things. If I go back to the scene view, I can use a rig pose, wire this in here, and then hit enter to activate the viewport handle and then just grab any of these joints and rotate them around and all of the downstream objects will rotate just like you'd expect in any FK hierarchy. At this point, you can treat this pretty much like any other KinFX skeleton but my geometry still isn't being deformed by this. So there's one other step that we have to take here. First, we need to capture the geometry to these kinetic effects joints. And the easiest way to do that, because this is a rigid hierarchy where each joint here transforms a single object, we can use capture packed geometry. And you just pipe the, out, the first output of a Mopsalemic skeleton 
into the first input here and do the same for the second. To actually link these two things together, we need to enable capture by attribute. And this is where that xform path attribute comes into play. I'm going to copy this value here and paste that as this skin attribute. What this means is that capture pack geometry is going to use that xform path attribute that Mops Olympic Skeleton generated uh, to link each one of these objects with its respective joint. Once I set that up, I can drop down a bone deform sop and then connect the geometry to the first input, the unposed skeleton to the second input, and the posed skeleton to the third input. Now I have my deformed geometry. I can go back to my rig pose here and then select any of these joints and wiggle them around. And the object will deform an FK hierarchy exactly like you expect it to. At this point, you can pose, animate, do whatever you want to this KinFX skeleton and the geometry would bound to it. And that's really all there is to using this node. It's a pretty simple little thing, but it's very helpful in quickly posing and animating rigid hierarchies like this. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.